Yes, Judge, we are ready on Smith. Um, and Ms. Hagler, um, well, everything I had announced was correct uh, as far as the null process and the pleas. Is, is that right? Yes. Okay, good. All right. So, Mr. Smith, you're before the court on 2022 CR 00951 um, for diversity, Dequez Smith. Um, my understanding is this case, along with 2023CR0374843, that's 2023CR0374843 uh, and 2024CR03387, those three cases named will be null prost in their entirety um, under an agreement between your attorney and the state. The remaining case is 2024CR03384. I don't have that listed on my um, calendar, so I don't know what that um, case entails. So somebody fill me in on what charges are on that case. Yes, Ron, that is a theft by receiving stolen property. All right. What is your client plead to theft by receiving? Guilty, Your Honor. All right. Factual basis, please, and recommendation. Um, yes, Your Honor. On or about July 8th of 2023, um, Officer D. Montano responded um, regarding um, the theft of two black blowers that had been stolen. Two um, black what? Blowers, B L O W E R S, blowers. I think leaf blowers, Judge. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, when the officer arrived on the scene, he made contact with the complainant, Mark Talinsky, who stated that earlier that morning his two gas powered blowers were stolen from his work truck. Um, uh, according to Mark Talinsky, um, he stated that his workers observed a black male take the two blowers out of the truck and get into a black pickup truck. Um, at this time, um, the state's offer is going to be a fine of $400 and the defendant is to not have any um, contact with the victim. All right, Mr. Um, Lynch. Your Honor, we would the court accept the negotiated uh, plea in this case? Yes, Mr. Laguda, that's fine. Um, yeah, uh, Mr. Smith, I feel like I'm failing you because I feel like I should be giving you plenty of time on all these cases because you don't get that you can't, you just can't keep racking up offenses, racking up offenses like it's nothing, like the court is something to play with, like people's lives are something to play with. But the the fact that that man didn't have the ability to do his job because two of his uh, two pieces of essential equipment had been stolen, um, that means you're taking food out of his mouth. That means you're taking food out of the mouths of his children and the people who work for him, all because you're too lazy and trifling to get your own job and do what you need to do. I don't care. Tell, Mr. Lynch can tell you, well, you know, I just need you to be calm and stand there and take it. I don't care what you do, really. Act up and you'll get another charge. But what I'm telling you is it's past time for you doing stupid stuff. It's past time. You got four cases in front of me. It's like you were just racking them up. Oh, it's time to get another case in front of Judge Hayward. Time to get another case in front of Judge Hayward. When are you going to get your life together, sir? Let's ask that question. How old are you? You owe for this kind of foolishness. This is kid stuff. This is 19, 20, 22, 23, where I'm stupid and goofy and I don't know what I'm doing and I haven't grown into myself yet. But you in your 30s, where you're supposed to be establishing yourself as a man, not somebody who's always getting over on somebody. Imagine if you had a job you owned a business and somebody took the essential equipment for your business and you couldn't work and you couldn't earn a living and money that you anticipated coming into your pocket, they took from you. Imagine that. But instead you out here, well, I don't care what happens to somebody else. I'm gonna rack up my accounts. It's horrible. That's not what men do. That's what little boys do. They take from other people 
They play with other people's livelihood. They rack up criminal charges like it's nothing. And now they're asking me to go ahead and give you a $400 fine um, and you're to have no contact with the individual whose property was taken. And they're no process in these three other cases, one of whom, one of which was a battery case. I'm like, something is wrong. Maybe I'm not doing something. You should have had a motion to revoke bond as soon as you got the second case. We should have snatched your bond, and that would have prevented you from having the third and the fourth case. That man would probably still have his property. So here's the thing, Mr. Smith, and you have a very recognizable name, Mr. DeVarsity Smith. Um, the next time a misdemeanor is committed in Clayton County and it has your name on it, guess who you're going to see? Me. Me. And I will remember you. You can ask anybody who works with me. I've been doing this for 10 years. And if I text the clerk and say, hey, isn't this, haven't I seen this person before? And they come back with, yeah, judge, they were here six years ago, seven years ago. I will remember. So Mr. Smith, this is your opportunity to straighten up and fly right. Okay. Can, can you start making some better choices for your life? Do you have kids? Two boys. Oh, my Lord. So you're raising them to come into the system is what you tell them. You want to see them in an orange jumpsuit right about the time I'm ready to retire is what you're saying. Okay, but it's okay for you to commit crimes and be out here wilding, but you you are acting like you want to raise your children, your two boys to be stand up men. Because kids don't do what you tell them, they do what you show them. So you showing them, yeah, it's all right to be out here hitting a lick. As opposed to showing them what a man looks like. Somebody who holds down a job, provides for their children, make sure they have, men take their kids on vacation. They're there when the kids are sick. They're there to go to the school conferences. That's, that's dad behavior, not baby daddy behavior. You can't do dad behavior if you in and out of jail, if you picking up charges left and right. If the next time I see you, I'm gonna revoke the balance of whatever time you got because you playing with me. We clear? How old are your sons? Seven to eight. How are they doing in school? Good boy, on the roll. Have you met their teachers? That's a no, because you're not an involved dad. So the only reason they're good boys is because their mom is making them a good boy. You out here thumping your chest about how you got sons. Ooh, I got sons. But you're not out here making sure those sons grow up to be men because you're not participating. You're a baby dad. You're not a dad. You're not the person that if something happens, the school's gonna call. You're probably not even on the emergency contact list. So sir, condoms are cheaper than uh, child support or child care. So before you have another child, remember that. And second of all, stop bringing kids into the world that you just gonna have a passing glance at them. You're gonna catch a glimpse of them every now and again, and you're gonna take credit for what their mama is doing for them. I love the stories about the dad um, who, you know, he's sitting in a bar talking about, yeah, that's my son. That running back is my son. Or, yeah, that doctor who, you know, was at the hospital performed that surgery. That's my son. And you had nothing to do with it. Not one thing other than you didn't use a condom one night. So if you're going to have good boys, if they're going to continue to be good until they become men, you're going to have to change. And if you can't have respect for their mother and treat her with respect and make sure she has what she needs to, to help them financially and emotionally, then they're going to remember how you treated their mom.
We're clear? All right, so think about these things when you're paying this $400 fine. Think about how when you take from somebody else, you deprive their children of livelihood. Think for, about how you would feel if somebody was taking food out of your children's mouths. Well, in fact, think about it. Think about what you're contributing to your children. Are you a dad or are you a baby daddy? Are you financially supporting them? Are you emotionally supporting them? Do their teachers know you? If the school, if something happened at the school and they couldn't reach the mom, are they are you going to be the next call? You, My husband, he's the first call because I might be in court. He is the first call. He's out there on the football field with them because they're playing youth football. He's out there giving the benefit of his experience because he's been trained as a coach. So he's out making sure. But you just being a baby daddy, racking up charges at 32 years old. Get it together, man. We got enough of, of people who being baby daddies in the in the world. Let's be dads. Get it together. All right. So um going to accept your plea. Um, so is does this come probation or just a four hundred dollar fine and sixty days to pay? What's going on with that? Judge, my understanding was just a $400 fine and, and 60 days to pay. Uh, that was my interpretation. All right. So, um, Mr. Smith, um, Mr. Lynch, and Ms. Hagler, this is sufficient. But I know that um, unless you take my words to heart, you'll be back and I'll be waiting. So, uh, $400 fi fine, excuse me, that's going to be about $600 with the surcharges. And you're to have no contact with the alleged with the victim in this case, um, and um, you'll have 60 days in which to pay the fines and fees. The no contact provision will be for the remainder of the 12 months. All right. Thank you, Ron. All uh, right. 